Hello everyone and welcome to another video here on the channel. Today we're going to be talking about something very very important and very useful here inside of CBrush, which are vector displacement brushes. So vector displacements were added a couple of versions ago, several years ago actually, and these are brushes that you can create with a lot of different things. I've seen spikes, rocks, eyes, ears, and the cool thing about this is they can save you a lot of time on your production pipeline because when you create a couple of them, specifically if you know what you're like going to be working, like this or like a rock troll that I'm doing right here, you can just create a bunch of variations and then project them directly into the surface. So imagine how much time we're saving by just adding all of this bunch of rocks and by having variations on how to create these rocks and just creating this super spike effect. You're not going to be safe from having to re-topologize this eventually or, or doing something to get it ready, but it's a very, very easy and cool way to generate a lot of detail very, very quickly. And you can make them in literally 10 minutes. So let's go. Let me show you how. So we got the character right here. This is a little sculpt that I did a couple of days ago to test the tablet and it was originally a goblin but now it's kind of like a like a cape troll or something and uh, let's imagine i'm a huge fan of monsters you know kaijus things like that let's imagine we want to add a lot of spikes here on the back this is where displacement brushes come really really into play because if you do it right the first time you're going to save yourself so 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 much time so this is how it works we're going to go well let me very quickly uh quick save this guy there we go and we're going to go Lightbox and we're going to go to the project. The reason I'm quick saving is because it's a project. And whenever we open a project instead of ZBrush, it's kind of like opening a new session. We're going to go to this folder right here. Very, very important. It's this miscellaneous folder on the project section. And I'm going to select this brush template 1024. And I'm going to double click it. I'm not going to save anything else. We've already saved the, the little troll guy. And there we go. This is it. So what do I want to do? I want to create this sort of like ridges on the back, kind of like rocky ridges. So I'm going to go to uh, my dynamic perspective. I'm going to turn that off. And with my mask tool, I'm just going to create like a sort of like irregular looking shape here on the element. And this is one of the strengths of the vector displacement maps or the vector displacement brushes that we're going to be using. I'm going to hit control click to invert the mask. And with W, I'm literally just going to push this up and move it to the side. This is very important. Normally, when we're doing alphas or we're using textures, everything is on a, on a sort of like 2D view. But with vector displacement, we can actually save this sort of like curvature so I can carve in and out to generate some like really, really interesting shapes. Now, very important rule. When you're working on vector displacement, you do not want to mess up the border of your object. So one thing that I like to do is I like to hide the border like so. And that way, even if I go to the border right there, the original border is still going to be intact. So it's just a, uh, like a good way to, to save yourself a little bit of a hassle there. I'm going to go with Trim Dynamic and just very basically here, I'm just going to start carving this sort of like, again, rock formation sort of thing. Now, there are some restrictions on what you can do with this uh, method right here, with the vector displacement method. And one of them is that you cannot use Dynamesh, unfortunately. So we're not going to be able to recalculate the Dynamesh for this element. That's why we start with the 1024. So we have, as you can see, almost a million polygons right here. However, even though we cannot use Dynamesh, we can use subdivision levels. So if we need to, this is why it's important to know about all of the different methods inside of ZBrush, which, by the way, you can check in our premium course down here. And one of the things that you need to know is that if we go a couple of subdivisions level up, we're, of course, going to be able to get a very, very nice result on our element, right? We're going to be able to get a lot of resolution. Yes, it's going to be heavier. Yes, it's going to be, it's going to require more geometry on our little guy right here on the, on the goblin guy. However, it's going to give us a nice, nice result. So, yeah, I'm just adding a little bit of a, of a border here. Imagine this is kind of like the, the scheme poking out. And if you've seen our shorts, you've probably seen one where I talk about that giraffe. We talked about that on the live stream. And I always mention that you're never going to find just like a single thing like poking out or like a single spot. There's always sort of like a gradient. So we already had like the big shape right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding some medium shapes. Okay, medium just like rough rocks around the character. And then there's going to be some small rocks on the on the sides like this. So it kind of like fades out, right? So it's going to give us a nice sort of like transition into this like big monolith sort of like scale or, or element that we're going to have right here. Let's keep adding a little bit more stuff right here. And here's the thing, like you can spend as much time as you want, like working on this. Some people like to create uh, vector displacement brushes that are just going to give you a sort of like head start on whatever it is you're doing. Some people like to go really, really detailed and create like super advanced ones. It's going to be up to you. Now, I don't want to bore you guys with the whole process, so I'm going to pause this real quick. I'm just going to keep adding a couple of more details here on the on the element. Very important to jump onto the top view every now and then to see how this thing is going to be captured so like a an element right there. I'm going to control D to give this an, another subdivision level. Of course, uh, the borders are again out and uh, we can start using trim dynamic again to, to kind of like polish some of those rocks. You can use them in the standard, for instance, 
Mr. Like trying to, to divide or a little bit of a division to this guys, because this at the end of the day is supposed to save me time, right? When projecting this onto the back of my, my character. Again, keep in mind that we can play with a three dimensionality. So even if we go to the top view and we don't see this little cave right here, we can include this little cave on our element. I said I was gonna skip this, but eh, I think we're, we're kind of like speed sculpting this. Now talking about speed sculpting, this is something that came up on our last live stream. Um, sometimes it's very difficult for me to to portray something important about the the work that we do, and that's the fact that not everything is fast. I know, again, we're used to shorts, we're used to to TikTok and things like that, where everything's super super fast. But to be honest, when you're working on a studio, you're not expected to be working at like the flash of speeds, right? Like you're supposed to be doing your job properly, and it's better to spend more time on something, even if that something's gonna take you a little bit longer to to achieve, than it is to rush it and then have to redo it again. One of the worst things that you can do is, is rush your stuff and then the client comes in, he says, he sees what you're doing or your art lead sees what you're doing and they're like, oh, that sucks, you're gonna have to do it again. And hey, sometimes if, if you mess up, they're not gonna pay you that extra time that's gonna take you to fix it. So it's very, very important that you you take enough time to to finish whatever it is you're doing. There we go. So th this to me looks, looks like a nice little, like um, again, like a rock bundle that's being like a projected from the, from the skin of our troll. How, how can we make this a little bit better? Well, the cool thing is we can actually duplicate this. So if we go here to the subtools and I just duplicate this one, I'm gonna hide the first one, we can create variations. So I'm gonna go a little bit heavier uh, with my trim dynamic. And I'm gonna start like attacking this a little bit more intensely on this side. Now it's gonna have a, a slightly different effect. I might create like a little bit of a crater here, like a, like a cut, right? And now it's not only one like stone that we have, it's two. If you ask me, like, how many should I have or how many should I, I create with my with my vector displays, I recommend three. Three is always, like, a good number for, for variation because if you play with the scale, with the rotation and the, and the placement of these things, um, it becomes a little bit easier. Now, you can see that the geometry there is, like, having a little bit of an issue. And this is because, of course, we're not being able to use the Dynamesh. So make sure to smooth things out. Uh, on this like stage of the element so that you get like this like the best silhouettes the best forms without really compromising like the whole structure of your element now later on once we project this onto the character we can of course turn on dynamesh we're gonna have to go on each specific stone and, and give it a little bit of a of a polish right but it's it's still gonna save us quite a bit of time from having to to create everything from scratch so that's stone number two let's duplicate again this turn that was off and a strong stone number three i want to create like a a little bit more intense or like jaggedy, jaggedy rocks. Uh, so we're gonna create some more like spiky, spiky protrusions on the on the stone. Again, kind of like a, like if it was chipped or something, and, and you got some some damage. Reference is of course important right now. I'm not using it. Don't follow my example there. Go and get some reference. I'm doing this so that I can show you the the whole process. But ideally, you're gonna spend I would say spend at least an hour working on this like uh, pieces right here. Create like two, three, four of these really good like vector displacement maps. And once you're happy, let me show you now how to project this. So let's say that's it, right? We have a number one, we have number two, and we have number three. I'm gonna turn them all on. The next thing that you need to do is you need, are gonna go to any of your chisel brushes right here. I usually like to go to this um, chisel creature or chisel, yeah, chisel creature is fine. It's like the first chisel, doesn't really matter. When you open Seabirds, this gets like saved again. Or in this case, as you can see, I already have a, a one here, chisel three. So you are gonna go to any chisel brush, you're gonna click on your brush menu and you're gonna go down here to create multiple alpha brush. Now, the name of the subtool is gonna be saved as the name of your brush. So if you wanna be like super clean about this, you can call this, I don't know, Rock A. Uh, press Shift and A. Do not press uh, like a Mayus, or in, in Spanish we call it Mayus because it's, um, it's gonna get out of this. So you're gonna press Shift, there we go. So Rock B, and we rename. That's gonna be Rock, oh, rock C. I right, got when this happens rock c there we go so you name this you select your chisel brush you click on here and you go to create multiple alpha brush it's going to go through all of your subtools and it's going to create as you can see a new brush with rock a rock b and rock c this brush you can save it i'm going to save this brush save as and in this case i'm going to save it on at the desktop if you want to get this brush i'm going to make it available for uh for you guys on our resources so you can jump onto discord and um and um and go to the resources folder you're gonna be able to get this for free. So yeah, this is it. Now, if we go back to the uh, to the little, what's the word? If we go back to our little goblin or our Toro right here, there we go. 
open the project real quick. As you can see, since, since it's still like the same session, we got this right here. And that's it. Now, keep in mind that these brushes were made with a heavy amount of polygons. So if I click on Rock A, for instance, and if I try to project it, well, first of all, I'm going to change this to drag correct. If I try to project it, you're going to see that it is being projected nicely. We do get a little bit of a border, but that's very easily cleanable. Uh, however, it's being projected very, as you can see, very like fragmented. And that's because this character only has 621,000 uh, polygons. I'm going to control D again to get more resolution. And now I'm going to be able to capture a little bit more resolution from our element right there. Again, the topology of the character might not be the best one right now to, to capture all of the detail, but you can switch between your brushes and you can see that every single brush that we created, the jaggedy picks right there and the rock A right there are being like very, very nicely affected or projected into our mesh um, for our character. There's a little bit of cleanup in bulk for this ones, and you might even see that on the old ones. Like if we go to the chisel creature, some of these guys also sometimes get a little bit of, a, of an effect then you're gonna have to clean it. But as you can see, look at this, like this is scales right here. If you wanna create scales for your character, it's very, very easy to just drag and drop. Now there's a, an extra trick that I wanna show you right here. And that's the fact that in one of the recent versions of ZBrush, they added a new mode to the stroke. And the new mode is called the drag stamp. So you select the size, let's say this is the size, and you start dragging and it's gonna tell you how intense or how soft you want the effect to be and you can rotate it and move it around. I think that border that we got was to the division and the fact that everything else was hidden. Um, so you might want to avoid that when you're doing it at first. But yeah, this is it. So now what can we do here? Well, I'm going to break symmetry and I'm going to start creating like some small variations here. I'm going to start really small right there. I'm going to switch to another one, go a little bit heavier, then switch to another one. Well, let's make the brush a little bit bigger, make it a little bit heavier. Look at that. And you can see how it's going to be very, very easy. We can go to drag right, of course, um, how easy it's going to be to start creating this sort of effects. Now, this thing that you're seeing right here is because of the focal shift. So right now, the focal shift, as you can see, is very, very intense. I'm going to make it a little bit softer. It's going to give me a little bit of a softer effect right there. So, yeah. This is it, guys. These are vector displacement maps. These are very, very cool maps, again, that you can create per project, depending on, on when and how you need them. And that's going to allow you to save and create a lot of packs. There's there's a lot of people out there that sell their, their vector displacements as well. So if that's something that you're interested in, like creating your own sort of like a library of vector displacement maps and selling them, look at how, how fast we can start creating all of these things. Now, of course, it's very, very important that you remember to use the little giraffe thing that I talked about. And in case that we're adding all of this like rocks to this troll they're not going to be added like just like randomly across the surface we should have a little bit of a purpose but uh, this is it this are the vector displacement maps my friends i hope this video was helpful if it was please don't forget to check our premium courses down here in the description check our discord channel join us on our live streams on fridays and uh, yeah that's pretty much it i'll see you back on the next one